In this video, I'm going to show you how to use Alpha 5 to track hits to your website. I'm also going to show some real world examples that most likely you experience every day using the concepts of server side scripting and redirection. I also have several functions that I'm using in various scripts in this process and I'll show you how to use those. Let's start by looking at some real world examples. If you're like me, you receive lots of email from various sources where you've signed up online and accepted to receive a newsletter. Here's one I get several times a week from Tech Republic. As I hover my mouse over the various links in my email here, notice the cryptic information in the link. If this was just a normal link to a web page, it would have a simple structure, just a page name.htm, and that'd be it. But it isn't that simple. Look, it has a question mark at the end, and it has values t equals 51105, etc., brand equal Tech Republic, and s equal 5. What is all of that? Well, I don't know what it is in this specific case, but I guarantee you that within all those numbers is my email address or my customer ID, a number that indicates which email I'm looking at, and the specific link I clicked on so that at the end of all this, they can transfer me to the page I expected to go to, and I'll be happy. The point being, when I click that link, Tech Republic will know who clicked the link, what email I was looking at, and where I wanted to go. They'll gather information from me in that process. Now, let's take a look at Google. I searched for pizza, and I came up with Domino's Pizza. Let's take a look at the URL under this link. You see just below it there, it says www.dominos.com. But this is the real URL. Look at all that stuff. And if you think that's bad, here's the Yahoo link to exactly the same website. And the amazing thing about this is that even with the URL that long, if you call Domino's Pizza, they'll still get your pizza to your house within a half hour. So what's really happening behind the scenes? Which is another way of saying, what's happening on the server? You think, when you click this link to Domino's Pizza, it's going to go straight to Domino's website. But what actually is happening is a bit more complicated. You click the link, and then you are connected directly to the Google server. The server parses the information that was sent to it, and it updates your profile. It probably sends information to the subscriber. It updates their massive clicks database, and who knows what else it does. And the last thing it does is it sends you to the page you intended to go to in the first place. Now, after making that sound so bad, I'm going to show you an example of how I do this right now using Alpha 5. As my example, I'm going to use the Alpha 5 message board. Anybody who has used Alpha 5 for a period of time knows that the message board is a great resource for both novice and professional developers. Give me a second while I find one of my recent posts. All right, here I am at one of my recent posts. Notice to the left that I have almost 3,000 posts in this message board, so I'm fairly busy there. And notice at the bottom I also have a link to my website. Now, as a full-time consultant, it's fairly important to me to know who comes to my website and what prompted them to make their visit. So as you expect, if you click the link to my website, it takes you there. But what if I wanted to collect some information from the visitor? What if I wanted to use some of the same technique that Google and Tech Republic and other companies use to be able to do this? Can I do it with Alpha 5? Well, the answer, of course, is yes. If I change the URL to go to an Alpha 5 web application rather than the www.alpha2go.com you see there, then I can run any script I want to on the server. And at the end of my processing, I can then use response redirect to send you to my website and in the process, I can gather information from you. And so if you click that link, you'll go to this page, which is running on my Alpha 5 web application server. And notice in the middle that I'm able to show the topic that you came from while on the Alpha 5 message board. That's important to me, because I'm not trying to be sneaky. I'm trying to show an example of how you can use Alpha 5 to do this. Now on the right hand side, I have a place for name and comment. If the user chooses to enter something there, I get a little extra information. But they can leave it blank if they want to, and they can simply click the Go To button, and it'll take them straight to my website. So in the process, I get an email. It tells me what topic they were on when they came to my website, and it even gives me a link back to the thread 
So if I want to click that to see more detail about what might have prompted them to come, I can click that link in my email. If they chose to do so, I also have their name and maybe a comment. And last, of course, on my server, I get a nice little database record for permanent storage. Let's see how this was done. Let's go all the way back to the message board post and take a look at the HTML source. And so here's the source. I noticed between the title tags was always the topic of discussion followed by dash and alpha software message board. So in my script, I'm going to extract this information for my email and also to be able to display it on the screen. The code I'm referring to is in this first XBasic block on top. So let's take a look at what's under that. The most important code on this page are the two I have highlighted right now. You see there it says result equal HTTP post and then some parameters, one of which is a URL. And then below that, topic equal result dot body. If you're not familiar with code and this is all foreign to you, don't worry about it right now. You can certainly find these functions in the alpha 5 help file and I'll try to explain it more as we go along. But basically what's going to happen is that the variable called topic is going to end up with the entire HTML content of the page the visitor came from. As another example, if the URL was google.com, then topic would end up containing all the HTML from the google.com page that you were on when you clicked the link to go to this page. And now let me go through each line in turn here. The first one says ref equals request.referrer. Now, request.referrer will return the URL of the page the user was on when they clicked the link. So using Google as an example again, if this link happened to be on google.com and you clicked the link, then ref will contain www.google.com plus any parameters that may have been included in the link. And these two lines just show an example of what I expect ref to contain when a user from the message board clicks that link. Now, I said earlier that the most important code on this page was the HTTP POST function. Well, that requires two variables. One is the part I have highlighted here, which is the URL except for the part after the question mark, which is called the query string. So I'm going to use a function called A5Split URL to take the URL I received from request.referrer, which essentially contains too much information, and break it up into its various components and then later I'll reconnect it in a way that satisfies the need for the function called HTTP POST. And so you understand what I mean when I say that A5 split URL will break up the URL into various components. Here's the components. The first one, HTTP, is called a protocol component. The second one is called the server component. This third one, which may or may not exist, is called the path component. This fourth one is called the page component. And this last one is called the query string. And so here I'm using simple concatenation to combine the protocol plus the slashes, plus the server path and the page, omitting the last one, which is the query string. And again, then I'll use these two lines so that topic ends up containing the entire HTML from the page that the visitor came from. Now, out of all that HTML, I only care about the information between the title tags so I use extract string to populate topic with just the text between those two tags. And as I also mentioned before, the information between the title tags is going to contain this text dash alpha software message board, which I don't need to have. So I use s-t-r-i-t-r-a-n function to remove that information. So topic now will contain only the topic that they were on when they clicked the link. In these two lines, I take the information contained in the variables topic and ref and put them into session variables because I will need them in the dialog event that I'm going to show you next.